Back to the Vine vs. Club. I'm your host, Simo Wunderlich. Let's get right into it with VIC readings. The former book. Look at the best of the best value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today, we have Smart Centers uh, read. Uh, the ticker is R -S -R -S, sorry, S R U U N, or the ticker is S R U, sorry. Uh, price at the point of filing is $25.80. Let me first say this is not recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into anything, and let's get right into it. Uh, thesis, smart centers. Uh, biggest advantage is the quality of its existing portfolio. Its strong tenant profile, virtually 100% of portfolio, has full-line grocery, 70% with a Walmart, makes its rental income generation stable, as evidenced by the trust's resiliency during COVID, but not particularly high growth. The largest opportunity comes the plans uh, to develop prime sites on lands they already own. Debt is high at 10x net debt slash uh, to EBITDA, but not apocalyptic. Interest is well covered and management seems committed to reducing leverage. Distributions uh, have remained stable at $1.85 per unit since COVID, albeit relative to many peers who had to cut their distributions. Although I don't expect distributions to increase materially as management focuses on reducing leverage, SRU use a current yield of 7.15% pays you to be patient while the company works to capitalize on new developments. Moreover, management specific specifically, Mitch Golter owns 10.5% of the units, helping align incentives. I think the value of the stabilized existing portfolio is $19 per unit, and the new developments are worth $17 per unit, amounting to a fair value of $36 per unit. Put another way, at the current price, you're getting the existing portfolio of $19 per unit and paying $6 per, un per unit for the new development pipeline, amounting to a cap rate of 50% on the present value of expected rental income from development. Company overview. Smart Centris is one of the largest owners of retail malls in Canada, owning 185 properties and 35.2 million square feet of gross land available, GLA, at key intersections across Canada. The company currently has a 98% occupancy rate. Almost all the REITs revenues come from open-air centers, which are often anchored by Walmart. 114 of the 185 sites Walmart anchored open air shopping centers. While new initiatives are underway to increase exposure to mixed use properties, smart centers is still primarily a retail right. With mixed use and office still making up a very small percentage of the total income, at present only 0.9 million square feet of the total 35.2 million square feet of GLA is dedicated to office, self storage, or apartments. Over 60% of total revenues are attributable um, to large credit-worthy essential service tenants, including Walmart, 25%, Loblaws, Canadian Tire, Lois, Dollaroma, and others. FY22 tenant retention was high at 88%, plus 290 basis points year over year. And in place, rents remain stable at $15.53 per square feet, plus 1% year over year. As of the first quarter, 23, committed occupancy rates are back in line with pre-COVID levels and 100% of deferred rents during the pandemic have been collected. Smart Centers traces its route back to the late 1980s when its founder and CEO, Mitch Galtar, worked with Walmart to bring their concept to Canada. Over the, over the following two decades, Galtar and Smart Centers developed 265 shopping centers in Canada. From 2001 to 15, uh, the growth of smart centers came principally uh, from the acquisition of and earnout of completely, uh, sorry, com of completed and fully leased open format retail shopping centers, predominantly with the anchors as Shadow Anchor being Walmart. In 2015, Callaway Rate acquired smart centers from Goldtower for 1.2 billion, 640 million assumption of debt, 160 million issuance of shares to Goldtower at $28.70. The balance cash and renamed itself as smart centers read following the acquisition smart centers expanded to mixed use initiatives leveraging lands already owned by the trust in 2018 Golta was elected executive chairman of the new read and in 21 he was named ceo he currently owns 10.5 percent of smart centers units outstanding and is personally responsible for leading the read of reads 14.9 billion development program Existing portfolio. 
smart centers existing a tenant portfolio consists of 168 income producing properties the remaining 17 properties are either developments not yet sold for profit or new builds that are not yet income producing of those properties 73 percent are based in the greater metropolitan metropolitan area of Toronto, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Ottawa, and Montreal. Smart Centre's 25 largest tenants accounted for 60.8% of their portfolio revenue as of first quarter 23. These tenants are comprised of blue chip names like Walmart and Lowy's. After 25% of the entire portfolio be by annualized gross profit rent is made up from essential service tenants who include in-store, grocery, and pharmacies. Given the nature of Smart Center's portfolio and mix of tenants, their occupancy rates uh, has been exceptionally uh, exceptional uh, through the cycle and industry leading when compared to its comps, 98.2% versus peer average of 96% uh, over the past decade. During COVID, these tenants pro uh, proved remarkably stable for the portfolio. 60% of the tenants were deemed essential services in Canada and remained open during the pandemic. Even in, even in January 21, the REIT had managed to collect 89.6% of its rents owned in the nine months that were impacted by COVID. With the remainder of under the SECRA program from the Canadian government, uh, as of uh, the first quarter of 23, 100% of deferred rents have been collected. Having a high concentration of large prominent tenants helps provide significant stability uh, to the REIT portfolio, as demonstrated by the experience during the pandemic. However, the flip side of these large, stable tenants is the relative uh, negotiating power they have. This is true for terms, e.g. Walmart has exclusive covenant on food sales on many properties, as well as over rent increases. Uh, same property, NOI, has grown at an average of 0.5% per annum since 20, uh, 2009, and renewed rents, X anchors, have grown at an average of 3.5% per annum since 2015. As such, while the existing portfolio should continue to grow steadily and produces stable cash flow, plus a 3% growth year over year, it is unlikely in itself to be a large driver of growth in the future. More recently, Smart Centers a stake in premium outlets in Montreal and Toronto, a JV with Simmons Property Group, has been a material tailwind for top line, helping drive a 3.8% year over year increase in the first quarter of 23. These properties are fully leased with tenant sales in Toronto well over $1,000 per square feet and 23 EBITDA trending over 10% higher than 22. Currently, Smart Center's properties uh, co cover nearly 35 million, uh, uh, sorry, 35 million square feet, no, that's correct, of gross leasable area, GLA. Spread across all 10 provinces in Canada, increasingly the REIT is leveraging its 3,500 3, acres of land to capitalize on an intensification program led uh, directly by Mitch Goldhar. Smart Centers has um, embarked an, on an ambitious $14.9 billion five-year redevelopment program encompassing 274 individual projects uh, spread over 90 five properties with the aim to enhance recurring income from two-thirds of these projects it is important to know that these uh, proposed uh, developments are on lands that smart centers already owns located in highly populated communities in every major market across canada currently 59 uh, 59 projects are either in progress or projected to commence in the next 24 months while an additional 67 projects are expected to be activated within the next five years 84 other properties are currently under review for an intensification slash redevelopment. According to management, these development programs will result in an additional 56.1 million square feet of GLA, GLA 27.2 million square feet, 50%, of which has already started or will begin construction within the next five years. Of this amount, Smart Centers owns 18.5 million square feet. These projects uh, consist of 110 apartment buildings, 88 condos, 7, seven townhomes, 8 office and industrial projects, 33 self-storage facilities, 3 hotels, and 25 senior living facilities. Moreover, their Smart Stop self-storage joint venture aims to develop and operate 15,000 units of storage over 1.3 square feet, 
with eight sites open and three more currently under construction. The project is uh, projected to reach its initial 15 locations by 24. And uh, first quarter of 23, the trust achieved residential zoning approvals on three projects, adding another 3.4 million square feet to the future pipeline. A total of 6.1 million square feet of new mixed-use permissions were approved during 22. Smart Living and Smart VMC As part of its expansion initiatives, Smart Centers launched a segment called Smart Living to focus on mixed-use residential and commercial leasing and development in city centers. The largest and most ambitious of these projects to date is the Vaughan Metropolitan Center, Smart VMC, located in the municipality municipality of Vaughan uh, within the greater Toronto metropolitan area. In 21, Smart Centers invested $513 million to expand its ownership in its Smart VMC project, doubling its ownership in Smart VMC. This investment made Smart Centers the largest landowner in the Vaughan Metropolitan uh, Center and set the read up for a significant wave of residential development partnerships. 1,763 condos plus townhomes, have been closed since the commencement of the project. Construction is nearing completion on Transit City, uh, Condo Towers uh, 4 and 5, and Smart VMCs comprising 45 stories and 50 stories, respectfully, and 1,026 units. The buildings are 100% pre-sold, and occupancy is expected throughout 23. In the third quarter of 22, Smart Living Initiatives buildings of um, its 67% owned Park Place Phase 1 project with 1,094 rental units across two towers and 960 square feet, 960,000 square feet. In the fourth quarter of 22, the REED commenced the first phase of Artwalk, a 627-unit residential tower across 550,000 square feet in which Smart Centers has a 50% ownership stake. 320 condo units have already been pre-sold. Construction is anticipated to begin this year, 23, and deliveries of these sites are expected in 26 and 27. When the full art walk project is built out, it's expected to consist of 12 buildings across 12 acres, 4 million square feet, and 4,600 residential units. Additional opportunities for expansion. Out of the uh, 184, uh, 185 total properties under Smart Center's current portfolio, only six have been intensified slash redeveloped. 95 uh, properties have been marked for intensification, while the remaining 84 are currently under review for redevelopment. Perhaps most importantly, uh, less than 24% of the lands owned by Smart Centers are currently being utilized, presenting significant opportunity for redevelopment and contribution to the rights FFO. Capital structure and debt. Debt, given the smart center's high level, uh, level of development activity in recent years, the REIT has taken on more leverage. As of the first quarter of 23, our SRU had a debt slash EBITDA ratio of 10x, having increased from 8x at YE19. Despite this, interest coverage ratios have remained robust, uh, above 2.5x, uh, first quarter 23, 2.9x. And a far away from their financial covenant requirement of le- more than 1.65x. The trust has presently uh, structured most of its debt, 82%, uh, to be fixed rate ac- across staggered maturities, waiting average term of uh, four years, providing some flexibility and relief from the pressure of a rising rate environment. Management has indicated their intention to reduce trust's debt and has focused on deploying excess cash flows to paying down the leverage. According to Goldtar, the trust has 200 million to 400 million of assets, e.g., zoned surplus land, that they recycle to pay down the existing debt balance. The timing, however, depends on market condition and developers' uh, appetite for new projects. Management is very focused on maintaining a pool of unencumbered assets, 8.7 billion as of first quarter 23. Using a 65% loan-to-value ratio, this amounts to an additional $5.5 billion of gross financing proceeds available. This is an additional lever that management could pull, especially since 78% of their total debt is unsecured. That said, the amount of financing they could theoretically obtain tells us nothing about the cost of terms of that financing. In my view, management points uh, to this fact to soften the relatively high leverage of the business on a debt-to-EBITDA level. 
I do think, however, that management can explore changing uh, the unsecured slash secured mix when large financing uh, come due if it allows for better debt pricing and or terms. They claim they're not super excited about current rates and locking them in for 10 years. They can't afford to wait out refinancing for another year or two, but I would think it prudent to lock in a bit. Distributions. The trust has paid $1.85 per unit in distributions each year since 2020. Prior to then, annual distributions increased each year from 2014 to 19 at a point um, at 5 cents per unit, although Smart Centers has kept their distributions flat. Since the pandemic, this is relative to the same uh, to the sum to the sum of their closest peers. Some okay to the to some of their closest peers, including Ryokan and First Capital, cutting their distributions and the others are also keeping their distributions flat since COVID. Well, distribution slash unit growth is certainly something for management to aspire to, especially as new developments begin contributing to FFO. I expect the company to focus on paying down uh, some of its debt before it materially increases distributions. Management reiterated this intention in their first quarter 23 call. Moreover, payout ratios have gotten increasingly tighter in recent years, reaching 93% of AFFO in first quarter 23. When you adjust AFFO for one-time gains uh, from closings of townhomes, townhomes and condos, the payout ratio is 99.9%. I don't expect there to be a need to cut these distributions, especially as operating free cash flow continues to grow from new rentals entering the portfolio and development sales product produce one-time but real cash. That said, there's little wiggle room at the moment and no capacity to raise distributions. Given my projections of cash flows, I believe smart centers can return to its pre-COVID normalized payout ratio as a percent of adjusted cash from operations, ACFO, in the mid-80 percentage of 24. Valuation. Given the importance of smart centers' development pipeline on its future earnings, I valued the trust's existing portfolio and development initiatives independently and combined them to reach a valuation per unit. Development initiatives are di differentiated between rental income and development projects. Rental projects are meant to be held and generate NOI for the trust. Developments projects are meant to be sold on comp uh, completion for a profit margin. To value these, I took management's figures of a square feet under development and estimated costs and applied assumptions about rentals yield on costs and development's profit margin. I valued the current stabilized portfolio by applying a cap rate to my projection for 23 NOI. He sees total value of developments at two billion and nine hundred eighty-one million. NAV a total uh, per unit. He sees at thirty-eight dollars and thirty cents. Catalyst continued completions on extensive development pipeline, new redevelopments um, opportunities, new re slash developments um, opportunities, adding materially to uh, FFO debt reduction. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time. Please write down in the comments below what you think of this idea.